Mills, and I'm representing the Noise Podcast at B Network. My guy to my left here. Yes, sir. It's King Corey, representing over Top LV. Your man's Jay Alonzo. Back to the classics. It's, uh, it's Hollywood Kev from the Noise. <laughs> Kev had the coolest look. <laughs> like the Chuck, like, Hollywood Kev from the Noise. Yeah, you know, me. You know, you know me. your man. You know is. Me. Uh, then we also have the uh, we also have our boy RJ from the Lace Rhymes podcast. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he couldn't make you know what I'm saying the first recording. He got some personal things to deal with. But RJ, we can hear with you, brother. Shout out to you. Can't wait to bring you on. We actually had a whole conversation about RJ. <laughs> I can't wait to get here, RJ. <laughs> got some questions for you, RJ, brother, for uh, sure. RJ probably had one of the most unique <laughs> top five baby albums, but again, we appreciate you guys rocking with us. Black on both sides. Black on both sides, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, since this is the first show, you know, what better way to start it off than going directly into the greatest debut albums? Now, this is going to be, it's very subjective, obviously, <laughs> but um, I think we got some good ones. Personally, I think I have the best. And uh, we're gonna. Uh, it's up for debate, man. It's up for debate. It's up for debate, man. And that's what we're here for. Debate's happening, man. <laughs> for sure. It is absolutely up for debate, and that's what we're here to do: is to have a conversation against good friends. These gentlemen, have, we've talked hip hop for every year that we've known, and this is my brother, obviously. So we've been talking hip hop for quite some time. To me, the greatest hip hop debut of all time, numbers wise. In fact, it's a classic. In fact, it is timeless. Snoop Dogg. Doggy sound. That's a good one. Okay. All right. That's, that, that's, a, that's a, a very solid pick. And when you when you really think about it, let, let, let's let's stick on timeless. You can stare your Snoop Dogg in the club. You know that when they go to like that little oldie section, <laughs> when you're, gonna get a Snoop track. you're gonna get you're gonna get a few tracks from that album at that. Well, oftentimes, you know, you'll come across the uh, the gin and juices. You'll come across uh, ain't no fun, ain't no fun. What's my name? Yeah. Depending where you at, you know. <laughs> Gin and Juice right now can get played right, right now. Right now. Right right gin and Juice and everybody's going to take that head 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 head. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, definitely. But at the end of the day, not only was it big for the time, it's something that's going to live forever. Snoop Dogg is still touring all What, two years ago he just did a, uh, a full run through tour? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's still coming. He got a whole another tour he's doing right now. And you know, majority of that tour is going to be doggy stuff. Which is why I said when they, when they first popped up, like, I guarantee it's going to be like 100% just old school shit. Oh, bro, four times platinum? And that was in the physical mm-hmm. era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This cast that could barely buy CDs at this time. Right, this yeah. cast that could barely move a million digital units, and again, everybody got Spotify. Everybody yeah, got true. Apple Music. For, it's almost in its golden era. It, exactly, it was, it was actually in its golden yeah. era around that time, absolutely. Especially for the West Coast. Uh, especially for the West Coast. Yeah. Around that time, it was transitioning. And cats didn't even know that people was, was spitting on the West Coast. And that was, what, 93? Okay. Yeah, no, Snoop Dogg's Dog Stuff definitely introduced you to a West Coast flow that was very much brand new. And, and, and almost really what he's talking about is not what you were used to hearing from the West Coast. Right. Right? As far as Boys and Hood was concerned, or as far as like, Easy and his and a solo run and Cuban and solo run, like, it was just different. And by the time you even got to Snoop, the flow was just way different. Shout out to RJ, he hit the nail on the head uh, with his top five because he had Doggy Style in his top five. Yeah. You were trying to figure out who the fuck Snoop Dogg was. No, most definitely. Like he came on, he did a deep cover record, and then he hopped on um, uh, Fuck It with Dre Day. Yep. And yeah. just, you know what I'm saying, this ruthless. He had no. Clout at that time. It was just this random skinny nigga just came on and just and just merch shit. And then you fast forward and he finally drops doggy style out the gate he had a winner. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. Out the gate yeah, he had a winner. And every single after I mean, doggy when you look at doggy style, that's probably the closest thing you'll get to an entire album being recognizable to true hip hop heads. Mm-hmm. Just recognizable Pretty tracks where tracks. you can damn near go track one to I think it's like 16 to, eight, 16 to 18 tracks on, on doggy style. Uh, you can go one top to bottom and just you just know whether you're spitting along with it or this. Oh no, that's definitely is this tracks from Dark Stone. Let's find out right now. It the is. Sh- the sh- 19 sh- tracks. Damn. 19 tracks on Doggy Stone. Wow. And I'm sorry, Ain't No Fun is my shit. And I'm about to like, like, See, that like is, Ain't that No Fun is a fantastic record. I'm and like, I think like, it's probably had probably the most recognizable album cover art. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You can that. You can do like that. That was. That album cover is timeless. Like, that. you know that when you see that album cover, like, yeah, that, that's that. The album that's cover, time. the title, it was just like, it's immediately recognizable. You look at, like, the, the dog's ass coming out the, uh, yeah, the dog's dog ass. Yeah. Like, all right, I get it. <laughs> get it? No, you say. <laughs> all right, I get it. And the record from 93, 
it still gives you the same feeling that you got when you first heard the records. No matter what song comes on from it. Yeah, most definitely. So I'm gonna end my pick, Doggy Style, Snoop Doggy Dog, 1993. I wanna see y'all beat that. One. Okay, oh, I got one. I'm not gonna beat it right now, because I'm gonna let y'all know I'm finna end all this right now, because everything that he just debated right now. He can debate for my album right now. Jackpot. So. <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic. <laughs> Definitely classic. He said, let's not step away from that. Let's not forget about that. But we, <laughs> no, but honestly, my number one debut album of all time, and I've been debating this up until right now, it's got to be Dr. J. The Chronic. Yeah. I'm almost, it's almost, gotta be. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. J. The Chronic. Everything that my boy Los just made, the argument for Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, yeah, the Chronic awesome. was. Yeah, the chronic replies. The chronic Just was the looking mecca, though, man. Mecca, man. Like when you was really curious as to what Dre was gonna do after the death row split, and then he came with this. Yeah, Just what? mind you, let's keep in mind, Dr. Dre is not a rapper. Yeah, not at all. But he and he, and he himself has now said that hell he, of a karaoke artist. I mean, he can karaoke <laughs> his ass off, but he himself has now said that. His intent for both the Chronic and 2001, he don't want to have his voice really be prominent on the album, and. You see that. And even speaking to that point, which another reason why, like I said with Doggy Style, I picked this album, man, because think about it, the album cover, undeniable. Yeah. I mean, the fuck, the zigzag with Dr. Dre's face on the front of it <laughs> was crazy. But then you gotta think about, sure. think about the artist that he introduced on this CD. You had Snoop Dogg, who yeah. we just said is, possibly has the greatest debut album of all time. He introduced Daz on this album. Mm -hmm. You had fucking Nate Dogg on this album. Mm -hmm. Like you had so many different artists and it was just a, a lot of times I think I use, Kendrick for example, I use Good Kid, Mad City as, when you listen to this scene, it's a movie, it's a vibe you get off of it. It's the same thing with Dr. Jerry Crown. If you put that right on, that is 90s LA, Everything about that, like it almost takes you back to there. Like, oh my, I could, I feel like I'm in a '64 Impala. You feel yeah. me? Like it gives you all of that. N.W.A. definitely woke up the country to West Coast hip hop, but the Chronic established what West Coast sound was about to be for really that that next decade. For so that next decade, and if you think about it, I mean, it's just it's just this timeless. Even right now, I mean, you can listen to the Chronic right now, and you're gonna have some timeless tracks, and it's like, oh man, that. I let me ride. Still let me good. ride. I was. Yeah, just, I yeah, honestly yeah, came yeah, here yeah. listening to the Chronic album. Let me ride. Come oh, on, man. <laughs> like nothing but a G thing. Like, like, <laughs> these are tracks that are here. Like man, and I, I remember being young. Like I'm young listening to this, man. Like I think that that album just defines West Coast hip hop. Like there's no greater album than the Chronic. You know, and, I, would, and I could probably throw Doggy Style up there too because these was the albums that I think even they were important. Every West Coast artist that has came out since that date has wanted to aspire to this album. Like, I gotta make a chronic, man. I gotta make an album that's gonna be timeless and that's gonna be my album. Like, it's if you're a West Coast artist, you there's no way that you've never wanted to work with Dre. There's no way that you don't know the chronic album. Like, that's that has to be in your album. So, uh, I gotta go with Dr. Jerry Chronic. Snoop Dogg Dogg Style's a good one, though. It's up, but, but definitely, yeah, I, think, I, I, I think, think the best. But I, I that spawned, the Chronic spawned Doggy Style. Yeah, like, yeah. that's a product of the Chronic. Like, without no Chronic, there's no Doggy Style. So, I mean, I think that's, that's a double entendre. Yeah, 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 like both ways. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's my number one debut album, Dr. Jerry the Chronic. All right, so let me. We sit up for a talk. He came from so far in the couch. I know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one, you, you brought up the the fact about my number one because I feel like we're going West Coast today, which I feel like is dope. Um, my number one debut album is an album upon first listen, you are immediately sucked into this world that. Unless you throw a Columbia Pictures logo on the front of it, with some credits that roll at the end of it, you just watch that short film by the kid in Compton. I'm talking about Good Kid, that's it. Good Kid is your pick. It's my, it's my debut number. It's my Fantastic album. album. Great album. Yeah. And I still think that's not saying enough. Kendrick came out the gate. Most people will say Section 80 is, is, is Kendrick's first album, which is true. But as far as his major label debut, Dr. Dre stamped it. It's on In The Scope. It's on Aftermath. It's on TDE. This is the debut album of Kendrick Lamar. And I'm telling you, I'm a fan of small albums, them 10, 11, 12 track ones. This album, bar none, you put it on and you just go for the ride. You know what I'm saying? By the time you meet Shireen on track one, 
shit when you you get up with the situation uh, on poetic just but by the time he gets hemmed up on good kid by the time mad city starts a while not and then you get of course who don't listen to uh to a uh, sing about me of Donna Thurston, you don't do the prayer with them at the end. Yeah, but then, let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? Don't talk about that. And then by the time you get Compton, and the beautiful thing about Compton is when a, when the Compton record ends, and then the the closing of the van, it restarts the whole thing again. Mm. That's how it, it, even in that stuff, it's, it's like a double entendre because like not only is Kendrick telling you this happens every day in the hood. But in 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 a, in, in a space of a young man like me just trying to get by, get girls, this is every day for me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the impact of Good Kid, Mad City, is one of those rare, rare things where like you know what, I can live with this album for, our, for the rest of my life. T Pop's up there, Dam is up there, but if you if you wasn't brought on to be a uh, Kendrick fan by the time you got Good Kid, Mad City, nothing would convert you up. Um, and, got you. and honestly, I think that's probably the best description that I've heard for an album is is, is cinematic as hell. Yeah, it's yeah. very you, cinematic. You, you, and then the fact that it even has lines in it, it has dialogue yeah, in it, you know what I mean? And you, you can t- turn the album on and just visualize everything we went through from getting the van, you know what I'm saying, hanging out with his boys and then going to meet Shireen and getting jumped, you know what I'm saying? Like everything. You, can, you can see everything that happened with that album. It's scene to scene, like like when you get Money Trees, fuck that, when you get Backseat Freestyle, and even the lead up to Backseat Freestyle, like, uh, I got a pack of blacks in the big CD. Get your freestyle ready. That's my Friday, baby. <laughs> it's like, yes, let's ride out, you know what I'm saying? I think that. what's dope about Good Kid, Mad City is kind of like the point I made with Dr. Dre and the Chronic, like, you know, you play that album and it shows you, you know, LA, West Coast in the 90s. Yeah. And I think fast forward into Good Kid, Mad City, it showed New LA. This is our era. This is how now we're right. seeing our day to day things in LA. There's a lot of chronic you know, influence. A in lot of chronic yeah, influence. Yeah, and it, it just played out like, okay, this is, you know, back then in the 90s to now. Like, I don't no, think no, nobody. I'll make course. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> if anybody has West Coast album, my point is made. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> my point is made. But, and, I mean, it just lets you know, like, LA, West Coast in the 90s, and you fast forward to now the new generation of West Coast. And I mean, Kendrick was the, and is the face of new West Coast. Like, it's, right. there was a long time in between where we didn't really, you know, have any classic, really, right. you know, this album is classic. This shows me what, you feel me, it's like to grow up on the West Coast. It's showing me, this is telling me everyday struggles. And I think Good Kid Man City, man, it, it just highlighted all those points. And man, when I tell you, like, the album is so well crafted to where, like, even when you heard Bassy Freestyle have to sing, like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, I, I mean he's, he's flowing, he's going off. Yeah. I don't see where this fits with swimming pools and uh, the recipe all I heard before, but then you hear it in the context of the album? Bro, this album plays out like a short film, yeah. and it, it literally goes from you, you know trying to you know get some trim to riding with your boys and getting hemmed up by the rival hood and getting hemmed up by the police on the same song, down to you you're in the car when your man's get smacked, and then your man's died, and then you get the, the prayer at the end. Like you just, it, it felt like, in my opinion, Good Kid, Mad City was. More than just a chronic experience, like like bro, good kid, good kid, Mad City drew from boys in the hood, man, society, higher learning, um, uh, po- a poetic justice, uh, the wood, like it literally creates a narrative, bro. Like 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 Kendrick is not just it's not just a Kendrick story. Kendrick is telling the story of the every man of that age range right around that time. You remember going home from school watching the Martin reruns, all that. You know, we grew up on that. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, I don't think nobody here could debate. I think there's probably no better album that was put together. No. I think okay, man, that album was put together. You can tell you put time in. Amazingly. Yeah, like, right, from that, the start to the way he ended it was put together uh, just amazing. There's like, classes about this album. That people take classes at, at Yale and shit about this album. How it's carefully put together and how you can literally practically visualize what he's saying to you. You know what I'm saying? And how it can relate to everybody on that level to where like, yo, he's telling my story. Yeah. 100%. I think we was just talking last time we was in the car about the skits being on the album. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, they're, they're crafted great. Yeah. Like, Even some of the songs had skits. Yeah. yeah. That you had to listen through completely to get the, the true feeling, get the true cinematic feel mm-hmm. of that of the album itself. Nah, that's a, it's a solid pick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Solid pick. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorite albums. It's, it's not the greatest debut next to, you know, Doggy Staff. Oh, or the front. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like both of y'all picks are my sons. So, but, you know, definitely sure be, is. if it's <laughs> not going to be the chronic, it could definitely be our offspring. So, it's I love the chronic. I love Doggy Style, too. 
my, my dying day, but what other album like Cookie Master is gonna give you the beauty, the horror, the the the, the chaos, the the uplifting, the, the changing of the mind like Good Kid, Mad City would do. No, most that's, that's a great that's a great yeah, that's a, that's a great answer. Yeah, okay. All three of y'all picks were good. Like I, I think I had um thought about having each one, like, you know, they might make it. But honestly you can call me boss. I don't care because I'm not. <laughs> um but yeah, scare what you got trying, man. Oh, oh, and I've been, and I've been, and I've been since, 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 since we say we was gonna do debut, I'm like, I guarantee you, Cavs will be good. Come on, I mean, the first week he sold 872,000. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and then double back the next week with 822,000. Yeah. Right, well, 16 tracks. When I think at the time, I think they only get paid for like 10 tracks, don't they? At the time, yeah. Or something like uh, that. No, uh, depends on the uh, how it's been. I think about, yeah, but you pay for like 10 songs. But either way, I mean, from from top. From the whole way through, you can probably, you've heard every song on there. He got some for women, he got some for niggas, commercial tracks. I mean, there's really no no debate at this point. I well, mean, you know, I mean, come just on. The- you know, uh, I feel, like, I feel like, 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 like you said, like you said, like it's timeless, right? No, most definitely. You're absolutely right. Y'all, y'all stuff is timeless. But I'm pretty sure this this album is just cross generational to me. Yeah, it is timeless. That's the you know what I mean. Like know. it's cast that is young, that's grown now, that they they know in the club. Yeah, most that definitely. They might not know. But, but what is in the clubs? You, you, it, oh, they'll know. No, I, I said might not. Might not. Think about, like, might you think not. about Gary's right. at this point, right? Like right now, you talk about if you pull out every every gem, whether it was an album cut or a single, like. At least eighty percent of Gary's Dodge trying is a a slap off rip. To about B.I.M.P. Paul Lil Rich. We're talking about in the club. We're talking about oh my god, what up, gangsta? Patiently waiting. Gary's Dodge trying was in my top five albums all time, so I, I I can definitely relate to that. But I, I, I'm sorry, man. Another product to my album, man. Another product, Dr. Dre. So I, I will say <laughs> this, though, if, if this wasn't my first, pick, this product was my second pick. I, I will say that. I will say One thing with, with Fifty, especially with that album. Fifth, he had the he had the East Coast boom bap style in his, in his presentation and his lyrics, but it still had a West Coast feel to yeah, it. Yeah. And not only that, though, I mean, granted, the songs were were good, they were nice, but if you actually listen to what he's saying, there is lyrical content with no, it. Was, yeah, it was, it was definitely was. You know what I mean? So I, I have to go there. I mean, but Fifty had a flow at that time. Fifty really had a flow at that time to when. Yes, he's from New York. He, 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 he said himself, I'm a New Yorker, but I sound Southern. Yeah, it's a track. It's, it's, it's I, I forget the lyric. song. It's, 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 it's a Lucy. Um, it's him and I think Bun B or something like that. And he raps and he sounds like he's from down south. Yeah. Like, like he's, he's killing it. So, I mean, to to be able to, to do that, you know what I mean, and be from New York, that's, that's tough to do. No, most definitely. But hey, that, that's a, a great pick, yeah, man, for real. Cause it's the best pick I know. It is. It's, <laughs> no, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's another one of my offsprings. But, you know, I'm going <laughs> to take that, though, because you feel me? It just further proves my point. But, <laughs> get Richard that trying, though, man, that, I, that, that was a special pick. That's, that's a strong heart, man. It, 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 it is. No, it, it, it has to be. And the reason why, bro, like, let's be real, when Get Rich, when Get Rich dropped, we were all in, uh, in high school. Yeah, yeah well, well, yeah, I was about to be in high school. So, yeah. right, so, so let's think about it. Like, you, you didn't want to be the one cat come Monday morning that you do not have a hit to them. I mean, I don't know any other artist so far, I guess, that's been heavily compared to Pac far as impact, not far as Pac far as impact. I mean, no, that's true. It was in the interviews and it was like, yo, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure y'all heard like, Oh, Pac Pac is alive. He got shot. He fit. You know what I mean? Like, like man, he wasn't hearing that from nobody. Else. No, no, most definitely. And I mean, and I think everything that came with Fifty with that album was when he hit the scene. It was bulletproof vest, and it was bulletproof this, and it was just like he was and like he just literally. Be shot five. Six, he was literally like, how he is now? I know why somebody shot him. I would have shot the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, no, most definitely. Most definitely. Let me look at the, the legacy that Garrett kind of left behind. Like, we're talking about. Not only was the album incredibly successful, then the, the, the movie came. Yeah. So, so you know, the movie itself, it's hard for me to go back to kind of like relist it. I'm like, yo, this shit is just hard. You know what I'm saying? But what I, what I do love about this album is that the way that the album just flows from the, the two quarters dropping. Yeah. And really goes right into boom, 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 boom. Like that shit is so hard to me. You feel what I'm saying? Now. I'm gonna go against your your actual point real quick because unlike these two, far as Dark Sound Chronic or Good Kid, I actually do skip a song or two on Get Rich. No songs are really uh, like my style with Yayo. I fucking hate that song. You know? Can I stand? It? You know? I used to be like that. 
I used to be like that. I used to be like that. And then one day, I was, I was listening to music and my phone was about to die. So, you know, I ain't want to skip it because of the battery. So I let it play. That song hard. <laughs> that's a good song. That's song I want to say, I was, like my style, if you want to skip anything, I don't think it'd be like my style. I feel like that's my style hard. gets to play, though. Yeah, like my style gets to play. Nah, that's nah. hard. Nah. There's not too, there's, honestly, it's not it's like it's a hood nigga feel good right <laughs> Yeah, no, because, and, and I mean, going back to even the Kendrick point of saying, you know, how he puts it together in the different places that Kendrick took you, 50 took you to different places. He had his, you had your deep gangster tracks where you're like, okay, and then you had your club songs, and then you had, you feel me, I mean, with P.I.M.P. and P. You got a song about smoking weed, nigga. You got a song about smoking weed, he don't smoke. Like it was crazy, and I think, and this may be a big, a bold statement, but I even think that Fifty reignited East Coast rap. Like I feel like it was that was East Coast's bad guy. Like the East Coast didn't have a bad guy. Like, who's your bad guy? Who's your you feel me? The guy that you could market as? Okay, this is gonna be him. Like, and I think Fifty just took over, took over everything. Like there was no other East Coast artist that was coming out that was. Even comparing the 50 at the time of doing this drop, like it was everything was 50 cent. I mean, kids wanted to be 50 cent. They had a video game, he had everything. He had ugly ass like, shoes, ugly like, ass shoes, on, everything. Uh, like, at one point <laughs> right. in time, you were putting 50 up there with Jay Z and all these yeah. great artists, like, and he was off of this debut album, it was yeah, this exactly. one album. Mm -hmm. I, I guess the question I would have for Get Rich Out Strong, I agree, mm -hmm. solid fucking debut, definitely one of the best out there. Can you honestly say that there was? I won't say I don't want to say a generation, but can you say that there was? You know, an equivalent to you know, saying the chronic doggy style, and even in some in some cases, good came out city. What do you think was birthed from um, from Get Rich or Die Trying? Kind of the I don't want to say gangster rap, but like. The resurgence of gangster rap. Like, if you notice, it's in a different place right now, and it started because of him. It started because of how he does things. And if we really look at I'm it, setting up too many y'all points. <laughs> if, we look, if we really look at it, I mean, I know we're not we're not talking about mixtapes, but if we really look at it, 50's the reason why you make a mixtape the way you make it. Oh yeah, very true. Ooh, that'll that give me that'll be a debate with your boy. I'm like, with, with, with Wayne. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll save I that love, debate. I, 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 love, I love I love Wayne, but to be honest, like. Wayne make, made his mixtapes because of 50. I don't know about that one. Okay. Because of, no, because of the way he was like the squad up. Because of, <laughs> because of the way he did. Who, who, you, before, before 50 came out, we like, did a mixtape run. Was anybody putting out a mixtape that sounded like an Wayne. album? Wayne. That sounded like an album? Mm. <laughs> sounded like an album. Because Wayne was Cause Wayne, Wayne, no shit, no shit, shit sound like an album now, but nobody was doing that before then. You heard a mixtape and you was like, yeah, it's rough. This sound like a mixtape. This shit sounds like an album. No, lot. The Gina radios were very much out with His run with Who Kid was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, a crazy run with Who Kid. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I, 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 I will see that point, though, and I, I can't necessarily say it was solely 50 because even at that time, you can't forget about what Cam did for New York. You can't no, absolutely. About, you can't but Dipset as a whole did yeah, for New York. You know what I'm saying? But, you can't, no. but even still, though, Dipset wasn't the bad guy. So 50 came right. Dipset Dipset was wasn't the bad guy. 50 Cent came with He, he, he was embraced joking. them. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that's the thing. 50 embraced being the bad guy. Like, he wanted to be the bad guy. He was, it, it, I'm 50 Cent. Like, it was, it was no, you know, he, he literally almost brought the West Coast to the East Coast to be like, it was that how much of a bad guy he was. Like it was, nobody listened to Get Rich or Trump like, oh, that's the East Coast album. Yeah, that's the New York. No, like. And, and to that, your point about uh, him bringing back Gangsta Rap, no, I, it's crazy because as soon as you said it, the first thing I thought of was after Big and Pop was gone, ultimately the game went to Diddy. And Diddy made rap. Very happy. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was almost fun. Right? It was yeah, almost he made fun. it super duper fun and then, here it, it, it was a shot to the system, and also with those comparisons to Pac, that's that that's why the comparison was there. Like you came in, you're doing some different shit that niggas on the East Coast ain't doing right now, mm -hmm. and you got shot a bunch of times. You got shot a bunch of times. <laughs> you must be Pac. Yeah, right, right. You must be the second coming. So no, I, I agree with you on that one for sure. But okay, so y'all say I have 50, and and this is a point that I hate to make, but it's it, it, it's a solid point though. Mm -hmm. Though 50s rise to like dominance and and that's the time he he, he, he snatched from the job. At the time, Ja had the ground for New York. Happy rap, yeah, yeah. Sure. It was happy rap for yeah. sure. I would personally say, though, Get Rich is, is in my top five. I would personally say 
that 50 took out Ja doing what the fuck Ja does. Not so much. Not, not so much. Not so much. Not the beginning. He eventually got there. He eventually got there. But Massacre, he was there. But Get Rich or Die Trying was just so... Massacre, he wasn't there. It was 50-50. The Massacre, I think it was more commercial. The first record he's singing. The first record was what? Massacre. No, he's not. Oh, Massacre? No, he's not. Niggas screw their face up at me. Also, real shit. That's singing? That's all on that drop. That's singing? No, well, no. That 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 wasn't compared to Ja Rule's. Right. I was at all. Ja was doing actual, like, love. Ja was crying in the studio. Come on. Ja felt some shit. But, but definitely Candy Shop, I, it, it would sound like something that Ja could have made. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it that was part of somebody was like, no, nah, you got to put some commercial shit out. You can't yeah, be shooting up all You can't shoot up everything. everything but exactly. You know, know, somebody has so, to, you know, to make a happy you story You don't like for girls, nigga? Right. But right. Curtis nigga was, hey, but even with the Ja Rule point, though, I mean, take that out of Even with the Ja Rule point, though, I mean, 50 came in and it didn't, wasn't like he, like, Slowly tried to take the crown from Jaru. He came and snatched the crown from Jaru. Right, like right. took it. Like that it. This, this is about you and your people. <laughs> like I'm making my career off of. No, I'm coming exactly. directly to you guys. I'm coming at you. And nobody and, and and at that time, nobody in the East Coast was doing nothing like that. Like it was nothing was as direct like that. Like it was directly. I'm coming here and I'm gonna fuck the game up. And that's what he did. I mean, so I, also around the time of like he 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 literally like you said he, he's coming at you directly. He's not give you no kind of support. Like I'm talking to you. I'm calling you a bomb. I'm saying by name. By I'm name. You by <laughs> name. Ja Rule, fuck you. <laughs> and then just thinking about I everything. Felt that, he was all names. And then right, thinking about right. the everything. I mean, Fifty. And then when he came on the scene, man, that for that little run, that that run that he had, I mean, Fifty was at everybody. He was going at your favorite rapper. Yeah. Didn't matter who it was. It didn't matter. matter if they were on the East Coast. They were a target. If they were if they were in the South, they were a target. He didn't care. Like I mean, if you, if think you about you everybody. Made a song when he was beefing with you. Were you target. were a target. We're now enemies. Like, and it was just it was just known. Like I mean, even some of your favorite East Coast rappers at the time who had big tracks like were terrified of this man because he was coming and like he was saying, addressing I I everybody. Shot him. I would have shot his ass too. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. He came, he came for a lot of people's career and, and the fucked up part about it is the reason that everybody had that fear is because we literally watched him in Ja Rule. And yeah. to, to Jay's yeah. point, Ja was ready. Right right not not ja even just East Coast. Big. Ja yeah. was ready yeah. in hip hop. Yeah. Right ja was that dude and 50 was like, this nigga soft. Mm -hmm. And the world's like, Huh, he is. <laughs> he got it. I just you know what? Like, Rainy Days was a song that was so much shit. Literally <laughs> stopped that man's run. Like, this yeah. man was on a. Probably a legendary run at that time. That's why Ergotti like, fuck you forever. I'm doing my best life, nigga. He fucked everything. That's a beef like, that would never go. Like, he literally took down that whole label. Like, yeah. everybody's done. Like, Bro, Black Shot had to stab that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I wanted to make no one. He did not like, yeah, I poked him. Yeah, I poked him. I did the time. Yes. Fuck you, me. I poked him. Yeah, I did. Yeah, most definitely. He's smoking my man. I poked him. <laughs> the fact that he was able to have such, you know, an, an, an influential run when it came down to hip hop at the time, in, the, in, in, in I can put this on the same on, on the same part. What's my name and uh, really everything I named from uh, Doggy Style. There's not gonna be a time where you're, you're in the club and don't hear in the club. It's just still that's in now. somebody said somewhere. Most definitely. Uh, and I think one of the good thing about I think all four of our albums that we chose that point right there. Out of all four of these albums, you can go to the club or go into any bar. So you you're gonna hear a song. Here, yeah. You might hear that yeah. in all four songs yeah, yeah, you dare, right? in one night. Cause you're gonna you're gonna hear something from Doggy Style. You're yeah, gonna hear right. something from the Chronic. You're mm -hmm. definitely gonna hear Good Kid, Bad City, mm -hmm. and you're gonna hear it in the club. I don't care yeah. where oh, and just in the so club right. is playing. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna hear it in the club <laughs> no <laughs> matter <laughs> where you're at. Some pools in my or the recipe for sure. You're throwing. You're, you're gonna hear these the songs. You're gonna you're gonna find one of the songs. Which I mean, I think that kind of pulls on our voice. That I mean, these are. These are timeless albums. Like yeah, these yeah. are, they have survived the time. Like it's, it's crazy to even think about that. Yeah, you, you can hear a single. It sounds like we old, dog. No, yeah, no, most definitely, <laughs> <We> <laughs> most definitely, no, most definitely. Yeah, no one said anything from like 2018. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It was hard because my my debate was going to be Nipsey Hussle victory. Like, I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on that. And I will say that. We look at that album maybe ten years from now. That is gonna go down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna show now. You were talking. You, you were talking about it um, beforehand. We were trying to figure out which one he was gonna run with. Um, I agree. Nipsey Hussle's Victory Lap is perfect. There's literally nothing wrong with that album whatsoever, and it has that same Kendrick value. So it's a fucking movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you can listen to that the thing. Visuals straight to them. It's more. It's more. It's more. Because it's the gearing up 
to finally get victory lap and then we actually get it and then of course the tragic way that it ends. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why Nipsey, like Nipsey's victory lap is like, it's gonna be like that, like all eyes on me. No, most definitely. Yeah, you know especially from your hardcore friends. Like, like the hardcore like, ones? Yeah. I, I mean, I've been listening to Nipsey from Buzz, they got no name. Like, so all the way now, it's like, crit. and like, <laughs> super crit. But the whole time, if you, it was one common thing, it was always getting the victory lap. Right. And for it to finally come out and to think about it, it comes out. The visuals he put out was unbeatable. I don't care what nobody yeah. said. That, those visuals that he put out that year, there was no better visuals. For, Oh, Even man, the losers yeah. he dropped was hard. Everything oh was good. But God, then the thing, hard. you have all this, you have the marathon, you have the marathon contains, you finally get victory lap. And to see how everything played out, Grammy nominated, mm -hmm. all this stuff, it was like, it literally could be a movie of how this grind happened. This is to succeed, and then you finally, you know, the tragic event that happens, I mean, it just, I think that's going to play a major part. And that was one of my biggest arguments I was going to use to keep that in there. But I think. 10 years from now, everybody's gonna yeah, be like, Yeah, because oh, especially when, when, you, when you slap Victor Lap, even, even right now, like, we're not even a full year on season has gone, but when you thought Victor Lap, the first thing that comes around, like, I cannot believe Nipsey's gone. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's like, why you said that. But, I seen a tweet earlier today, someone was like, damn, we're Nipsey really going to get to the same shit. And I don't mean to sound like a hater, because I agree, Victor Lap is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. But kind of a little bit when we think about the Pac and the Big conversation, we saw the effect it had, at least the hip hop heads, we, and it was the fact that we've been waiting on this album yeah. for so long, loved it. Perfect album. Commercially, would it have had the same impact nope. if it had if Nipsey didn't die? Nope. I, we saw that because now they're starting to play shit on the radio. We the only never got was last time that I checked. I won't say that. I, I can't say no. I think that the, him passing away did, of course, help with that. But I will say that this album was the album that was getting ready to take him there. Oh, definitely. Yeah, We're getting yeah. radio singles. Oh, yeah, it would have took him there. I mean, he was, he was nominated for the Grammy. And honestly, the only reason why he did not win that Grammy is because Cardi had the best shit that right. he could have possibly had. She had a great year. She had a great year. But, but more so, we knew for a fact he had shit in the back. Yeah, was really he was getting ready to make that transition to actually being played on the radio. Like right. Jay style type shit, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. he, he had enough connects enough plugs where he can like the next project Victor Lab may not be the one that got him there but it was the conversation start that was it's the it's a swan song because now, now he's gone but had he lived on and that next that next Nipsey project would have been oh yeah it would have been oh, something man. different no, it would have been something super different you know what I'm saying and again even though I love 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 Victory Lap was not a greater debut than Snoop Dogg Doggy Style. <laughs> I like Victory Lap more than I like Doggy Style. Dude, I'm talking about I got general, no, I feel that. general success, staying power the whole nine. Y'all listen, y'all let us better. Y'all let us know. Let us know in the comments on because y'all happy watching this on YouTube. They don't gotta let nobody know. On they all pick my sons. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his damn hand. I mean, they ain't got and without, they already still, know it's mine. It, so it's, that's why. Without the chronic, none of these albums would have came out. There's no, there's but no, that's, that's, you know, no, no, wait, that's, that's not, not there's no 15 no, 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 How much of this did Dre actually write? None. Hey man, that's not, that's not what we're talking <laughs> he about. He made the beats. We can, we, that, that's not what we're talking about. That. That's not what we're talking about because without Dr. Dre, without Dr. Dre's production credit yeah. on Get Rich or Die Trying, you don't want to hear Get Rich or Die Trying. Dr. Dre You has, didn't want to hear 50 Cent on no East Coast producer beat. Dr. Dre has the most record. But he had East Coast producer beat. Coming out, coming out. Think about it, coming out. Well, no, think about it. how many songs Dre actually produced on Get Rich. Man, that whole Three, vibe four? still was, it was that vibe, though. It's a vibe that is. Like, no, but you, you can't count out Sean Money XL. He's all over that mug. You can't count out a few people you really can't count. Alchemist, I believe, caught a beat, too. Well, Alchemist is. You feel what I'm saying? So, one of their greatest like, it's, it's really like the name, like, Dre and M took the song. Yeah. You Dre know what I'm saying? With Dre and M stepping at. Good. I mean that's that that helped him a lot. That that put it there. So like I said, man, it's all products of the chronic, man. No, but, but, but 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 so I can't say that. That's the product of the Dre, not this. But while we're talking about okay. producers, though, the product of Dre for while sure. we're talking about producers, though, don't forget, Good Kid had the debut of Tay Beast, Soundwave, all their in-house producers who were putting out complete heat. Hey, who were they waiting for? The star who co-signed it. <laughs> Hey, who? Thank you. <laughs> hey, who co signed it? It's two dog doggy style. style. There was no bigger co signer than Dre. Like, and that's why that's what we started talking about production. I just got quiet because I'm like, co Dre, Dre produced top to bottom. Co one out of Dre. all the West Coast artists that, that we've heard, who has let their friends get on the track and it sounded the best? You know what I mean? Like, well, for instance, we get a, a Pac album. He get his friends on. It makes his ass. No, so out of all the West Coast <laughs> artists that let their friends jump on their track, yeah, who, who, who's the best? I'll tell you right now, I got one, I got one, I got, uh, 
I got two actually. Uh, R.I.P. the Bloods uh, and Badass. Uh, we'll still brought Badass on for uh, uh, a few different records. Yeah. <laughs> a few records, uh, definitely. But, but the one I'm actually thinking about is Wrong Idea. Wrong Idea. We brought Badass on Wrong Idea. And the same album, which is. If we're, if we're talking about just albums, then bro, you can't. Snoop, the last meal is hard to ignore. That was bro. my very it first is, album I bought myself. But so, on that same I album, you know, I, I made a good choice. <laughs> on that so same album, though, bro, when, when Snoop brought Superfly on um, uh, uh, Losing Control, you know, Superfly ate that shit up. Once he ate that verse up, killed that shit. You know, but also, to two Cavs' point, 50. 50 made sure his whole camp went platinum. We act like Tony Ayo didn't happen. Like yeah. 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 leave, yeah. leave Thoughts of Predicate Fellas where I was. He's trapped. If any of y'all came in here saying Thoughts of Predicate Fellas, exactly. what's the like, best thing we have to do? I was like, you're right, bro. The show was over. But when that Sosa Dungeon came out, I was like, oh, nigga, you know what it is. And also, I mean, to get 50 years credit, I mean, he did. This is another album that was probably going to be in my top five when it didn't make it. But Documentary. That was on mine, too. That was on mine. He did. You feel me? That was a spot of it. You feel me? His hand was all over. That, yeah. you feel me and yeah. you feel me by that that's a yeah 50 I can't I can't argue too hard against 50 Cent man uh, so again let us know in the comments who do you think had the best debut album whether yeah. you know between us or between your actual debut album you can find me at Big Los IG on IG it's King Corey or over the top LV on IG your boy I am Jay Alonzo IG Twitter Instagram and Snapchat Oh, you fit. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no one else named Jamie. Hollow Kev, man. Um, Twitter, Instagram. Hollow Kev. Do it. All right, so again, let us know in the comments who you think had the best debut album, or let us know what you think is the best debut album. Turn on mic up every Friday. BeNetworkOnline.com. We out. Yes, sir.